Hello and welcome back to April Space 5.32, The Attendant. We are back. Ooh. One of these days you should bring Blood Drive back. That's after April Space. Crossover. Blood Drive x Aetheral Space crossover. I will admit, after Aetheral Space, what I'm probably going to do is something that's sort of like the new version of Blood Drive. It's going to be very different from Aetheral Space and Blood Drive, though. It's funny, though, because Aetheral Space is also the new version of Ethereal Space, which yeah. once existed. The prototype. So, so instead of Blood Drive, will it be called, like, oh, what's a cooler word for drive? It's going to be very different. Like, it's going to be like about the whole world that Blood Drive takes place in rather than just vampires or whatever. Right, right, but just how you called ethereal aetheral space, I want it to be like Bleeds blood drive. ride or ma- ble- b- what what drive? Bleeds drive. Bleed drive. <laughs> Hemo drive. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. <clears throat> Old owl breathed in the air of the underworld. It was only fitting that the end of all this should begin here, among the filth and darkness that lurked beneath Corin. Illuminated only by lanterns, Old Owl's squad grimly made their way through the pitch-black cavern. The foundation of the city was the Great Craft, the Starship, as it was called. From what Old Owl understood, it had landed on a great indentation in the world when it had first arrived. This space, then, was the colossal gap between the bottom of the Starship and the bottom of the indentation. He glanced fruitlessly upwards to darkness. If he had eyes more suited to this shade, would he see metal above, or was the craft better disguised than that? Once they were all gathered, they would begin their attack, the Grinhe flooding up from beneath the city to seize the most important strategic point. If all went well, they could strike before anyone knew to prepare for them. That had been the plan they'd first decided upon. Still, he felt uneasy. All but young Greena's group had already arrived, and she was far overdue. Had something happened? He knew she'd been transporting a captive regulator, but he had been securely restrained. He cast such uncertainty from his mind. He had no use for it. If Greena was not here, they would simply act without her. The Grinhe were a great tree. They could not shed tears over every missing branch. Some final courage was needed before they began. Old Owl fished the hologram projector out of his pocket, clicking the button on it and turning it on. Immediately, a wavering figure appeared before the gathered Grinhe, and the mutterings and mumbling among them transformed instantly into respectful silence. Their group had no manifesto, but this projection served as sufficient motivation. The man looked the same as ever. Long, pale hair and extraordinarily bright blue eyes, with a sternness to him that suggested great discipline. A soldier, perhaps, or at the very least someone who had seen war. He spoke. This is Ervator and then Los. All that follows the, the truth. I leave these records if they should be needed in the... Sure. And with that, he blinked away. It was a simple message, merely a prologue to provide context to the hours of footage that followed. Details of the planets that should have an apostrophe. Ecology the first arrival there, the purpose of the Guardian Entities, with hints of the horrific war that had driven this man and his followers to settle upon XK-12. Sometimes there were mentor- mentions of a superior, some being greater than them, Ilan Swittel. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. And every time these mentions were laced with reverence and mourning, both. Old Owl could not understand all of what these messages said, but that didn't matter. They were proof, proof that the truth existed. It was the first thread they would pull. The hologram faded away, and Old Owl delicately returned the projector to his robes. He vaguely wondered if he'd ever look at it again. After all, in a few minutes' time, the end would begin. You know, this whole, like, truth versus ideals kind of reminds me of Pokemon Black and White, if you ever played those. Uh, no, I, I know what you mean. I really kind of like that dichotomy. It's like, more than just truth and lies, going beyond the idea, because Garth has ideals, right? Mm. Like, it's not just about keeping people ignorant. He does it, like, for the sake of their happiness and, like, painting, in his mind, the bright future. Whereas these people want the truth. They don't want to be burdened by and, like, placed under, what's the word I'm looking for? Servitude of these lies, kind of. Yeah. And it's sort of, like, very interesting dynamic. Uh, the hologram faded away and Old Owl delicately, delicately returned the projector to his robes. Uh, he vaguely wondered if he'd ever look at it again. After all, in a few minutes' time, the end would would begin. Akamanto lifted its hands away from its face, the last remnants of its shattered mask slipping between its fingers. Does he have a normal voice a now that more, his a mask bit is more off? Normal, yeah. How dare you! The man seethed, Aether crackling furiously around him. How dare you! His hateful gaze was fixed on Dragon. Two pairs of bright blue eyes glared at each other. Wait, what? Oh, because they, they're both cogitants. Yeah. 
<laughs> I thought I thought you were saying like his ears, his eyes were staring at one another because I'm brain dead. <laughs> huh? Muttered Dragon, staring at his opponent. I was expecting you'd have a couple more eyes than that. Maybe scales or something. Guess not. The man floating before Dragon and Bruno was human. That much was obvious, and a cogitant at that. Sapphire blue eyes narrowed as Akamanto pulled itself free from the wreckage of the elevator wall, long gray hair falling down over his shoulders. The man pointed a long, trembling finger at Dragon. You'll pay for that, he hissed. Looking at him, Dragon couldn't exactly tell whether the man was young or old. Despite the wrinkles that covered his face and the lifeless hair that hung like hay from his head, there was a bright and clear quality to his eyes that made Dragon think of a younger man. It was as if time had managed to strike him in some places while moving neutrally over others. I see... Dragon said, adjusting his stance slightly. Makes sense that a human being could be recorded as a guardian entity if an animal can. What were you, then? A crash test dummy? You'll pay for that, Akamanto repeated, before slowly retracting his accusatory finger. But I am not unreasonable. I must admit that I feel something akin to gratitude right now. You've done me a service. Bruno narrowed his eyes, slowly getting back up to his feet. How's that? The man picked up a shard of broken ceramic between his, two of his fingers, turning it over in the light. I won't deny that I am unlike other guardian entities, he said softly. However, this mask served the purpose of locking me into certain patterns of behavior. Now that it's no longer a factor, I'm certain we can resolve this conflict in another way entirely. Invisibly, Dragon primed another Gemini shotgun, ready to fire at the other cogitant's head given half a reason. Oh, he said. What if I told you you were full of shit? Akamento smiled genially, dropping the shard. That's rather unkind of you, dragon Hadrian. We've operated as enemies thus far, but that's no reason for rudeness. Dragon! Dragon snapped, emphasizing the pronunciation. Dragon Hadrian! And I'd consider trying to strangle me to death to be pretty rude on your part. Alas, the mask! Akamento gestured to the pile of ceramic on the floor. But you're absolutely right. I've operated without manners from start to finish. Allow me to begin making up for that. The entity bowed theatrically, cloak billowing around as he floated. A pleasure to formally meet you, Dracon Adrian, and... Bruno, the man, grunted the man himself. And Bruno. If Ancomanto was thrown off by the obvious hostility, he didn't show it. My name is Endin Los. I'm sure you've already realized this planet was the retreat of a gene noble. Dragon didn't answer. He just kept watching Akamanto, or end in loss, apparently, watching for any sign of deceit or subterfuge. Even with the strange form he'd taken, his body language would betray him all the same. I'm certain you have, Loss smiled to himself. You two seem intelligent young men. I'm perfectly willing to spare your lives and arrange your escape from this planet, should you cooperate with me on a simple matter. And what matter is that? Dragon asked. He glanced down at Bruno, no, at Serena. The color of their body's aether had shifted slightly to violet to reflect the new dominant personality, and she was tense, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. Los certainly noticed that as well. He had the same cogitant senses as Dragon, but it didn't seem to affect his new genial demeanor. Only as he spoke did the slightest trace of anger infiltrate his expression. You're a comrade to Lily Aubrisher, aren't you, Dragon Hadrian? Los asked, his voice still perfectly calm. You were together in the swamp the last time we met. The last time we met, Dragon scoffed, I remember it a little differently. I'm pretty sure you tried to kill me back then. I truly regret that, Los nodded, an expression of anguish twisting their face. As I said, however, my actions were limited by that mask. I had little choice but to approach under such terms. That's no longer the case, which is why I can now offer you this more personable deal. Should you provide me with Aubrisher's present location, I'll direct you to the escape pods of the starship we just left. The escape pods? How generous of you. Los smiled thinly. I like to be reasonable when I can. They're still operable, and I'm certain they'll suffice to get you off planet. From there, it's simply a matter of sending out a distress signal. You can resume your voyage among the stars within a day or so. It's not such a bad deal, really, is it? There, and in loss made a single mistake, a single twitch of the eye, incongruous with the rest of his expression. The telltale mark of a liar. Bruno spoke... <laughs> Just the mark of a liar with Bruno following. Tr triggered something Pavlovian. Bruno spoke up through Serena's mouth as he reasserted himself. What do you want with Lily? As ever, he was appreciably blunt. Dragon would happily dance through words all day long, but Bruno would actually ask the question he wanted an answer to. Los frowned. 
Is that relevant? Bruno narrowed his eyes. It seemed that was all the answer he needed. Things would erupt into violence once again within the next minute or so. Before that would happen... Before that happened, it was vital that Endin Losa's attention was focused on Dragon rather than Bruno and Serena. That way, Serena could leap in and execute a sneak attack while Dragon supported her with his Gemini shotgun. He spoke up, cold sweat tickling at the back of his neck. I think I know exactly what you want with Lily. It's her guardian entity, right? The effect was immediate. Endin Los... Losa's pupils dilated only slightly, but the tension in the hallway increased to such a degree that it felt like they'd be crushed by the gravity. I'd watch your next words, kin of the blind men, Losa said slowly. His voice promised murder. But if there was one thing Dragon Hadrian was good at, it was not watching his next words. And so he continued. Lily was never meant to get Raiju in the first place. She snuck in that room down there, Dragon jabbed a finger at the elevator, and was given it by mistake. I'm thinking it was just lucky timing. And in Losa's body language was perfectly neutral, the fact that he had no tell serving as a massive tell itself. If he suddenly wanted to hide his emotions even more, it suggested that Dragon noticing those emotions would be disadvan disadvantageous to him. So he was definitely on the right track. Dragon went on. You were already down there, already preparing to give Raiju to someone, probably yourself, when Lily came and interrupted. So you're wanting to go grab Lily and force her to return that guardian entity. As for why you're fi so fixated on that specific entity? Well, I'd bet it's because... Losa's facade broke, his face warping into a mask of utter rage that resembled the previous ceramic more than anything. Don't you dare! he hissed. Because that guardian entity is the corpse of your beloved gene tyrant. Bum, bum, bum! So is this guy like a servant to gene tyrants? Yeah, he's the guy that's been in the um, the recordings that Ruth has seen and Old Owl has on him. He's the gene butler? Basically, yeah, that's it. He's the gene butler. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna popcorn it to you. Many hundreds of years ago, the young man's hands desperately clutched the tendril, gripping it so tightly that as if that would keep its owner here, would prevent her from crossing to the other side. The dying god was stuck between half a dozen forms, some parts mammalian, some reptilian, some arboreal, and some stranger still. The sparking blue harpoons protruding from its back had prevented her from fully assuming any of the forms she would have needed to win. Stay with us, your nobility, the young man breathed, kneeling beside his creator. I'm certain we can treat your injuries. Given only a little more time, I'm, I'm sure of it, I am. The gene noble ignored what he said. She knew just as much as he did that any further effort would be pointless. The majority of her body had already become a corpse, after all. Loose. No. The divine being mewled through half a dozen remnant mouths. You will continue Wait, are Gene Tyrant's gods, or is this because it's like from his perspective, his perspective. and he views them as such? Okay. You'll continue my will, won't you? You'll ensure my subjects are safe? The young man hurriedly nodded. It mattered not what the quest was. If his creator asked it of him, he would gladly carry it out. Of course, he sobbed. Anything you say, anything. I have to admit, there's an interesting cultural implication uh, if you had, like, a religion of Gene Terrence and you could literally speak to the people who created you from, mm -hmm. like, nothing. That's, like, a whole new level of, like, godliness and reverence. Exactly, Very interesting. Yeah. What a dutiful thing you are. The god was fading fast. The young man pressed a limp tendril to his cheek, trying to ignore just how cold it was. I can be nothing but, he whispered. You have created me, given me purpose, fed and clothed me, O oh noble one. Who else could you be but my mother? What wretch would I be if I did not obey? The gene noble had no reply to that, for it had already departed from this world. The young man stayed there for quite a while, frozen in place huddling close to the corpse until the last traces of life's warmth had gone. Then he stood up. There was work to be done. Oh, popcorn. Oh, come on. <laughs> My throat hurts. Okay. Present day. Thank Shut you. Shut your damn mouth! Low screamed, cloak billowing around him as even the window shook from the volume of his voice. Dragon gulped. Guess he'd been right on the money there, at least. The aphid surrounding ended and lost increased intensity, so much that it was like Dragon and Bruno were looking at a red and blue supernova. Whatever this was, Dragon knew it would be beyond anything they had seen from a guard entity before. Serena, he cried, already firing off his Gemini shotguns. Go! Serena leapt in, a broad sort of cobblestone already clutched in her hands, but it was too late. The aether building up around Los consolidated into a single point, deep within its robes, then... Open, O oh Earth. The cloak opened, and hell poured forth. Garth sighed as he looked over his city. He couldn't waste time in fruitless self-reflection. The events of the next few hours would decide the future, and he would decide the events of the next few hours. He would protect this view. 
He turned from his balcony, taking a deep step breath as he prepared himself for the trial to come, only to stop mid-step. A set of steel claws were brushing against his throat. Three people stood before him in the middle of his office. A glaring Lily Aubrisher, a nervous good lady, and a clawed girl with red hair. He recalled her from the memories he'd absorbed. One of the outsiders. Ah, he said lightly, recognising the situation before him. I see. At last, everything was going his way. This is like the scene where at the end of the after a chapter it fades to like a chessboard with the king tipping over. <laughs> And then, and then does, anime ED plays. But why does he think this is good for him? What could he be thinking? Guess I'm imagining it's that. because Lily's here and she's got the guy that he knows Akamanta needs. Well, yeah, and that, that is... like... Maybe him dying officially frees Los, although I think destroying the mask already did that. Well, that is if Los isn't full of shit, we have to keep in mind. Indeed. Damn, this is... I'm really curious as to how this go, is going to go. Is Los Aether Awakening right now? Is he, like, summoning the strongest technique yet? If we're finally getting some lore on the gene tyrants and their servants. Like, this is, like, in terms of, like, hierarchy boss-wise, this is, like, the strongest one enemy they faced, if you don't count Marie. Like, mm, like, right, a, yeah. like a subject to the big bad... One of the big bads. He's like, I am the demon butler, general. <laughs> He's <starving>. Los Endos. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play a game. It does that also, and it like fades in the played video games. Also, the line the cloak opened and hell poured forth goes hard. Thank you. Good line. I'm very excited to see the ensuing fight. I have a next feeling these next three to five chapters will be pretty good. Unless you like flash over to Skipper doing some bullshit, then I'll be really <laughs> pissed. It's like oh, he's playing in a like a gambling parlor. He's like, I wonder what my friends are doing. Dolly. <laughs> Let's play a game, and you tell me where ah, the castle is. That's a baseball. <laughs> yeah, like everyone's fighting for their lives. He's like, I'm still trying to find the castle they speak of. I don't tell know me. where I am. <laughs> I'll raise you my mother's soul. I'll raise your roof soul. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. That is so fucked up and joke because he just he can offer people souls that aren't there and don't agree. Yeah. That's what is pretty messed from up. being like, I, I bet Dio's soul? Offering someone soul without consent? Um, that's kind of Jotaro. problematic, Jotaro. Well, that's it. That's enough Jojo discussion for this April Space video. Alright, well thank you guys for watching as always. You know the drill. Leave a like and a comment. Go leave a <sighs> review on Royal <sighs> Road. Tell all your friends. Spread the word. We're trying to make the series a big thing. Talk about it on social media. Yada yada. Uh, is that all for today? That's all for today. Alright, I'm gonna go down some NyQuil and pass out. Peace! Bye!